Good morning. This is Charles Hartgrove with the Virginia Institute of Government. I'm the Associate Director and I'm at the Weldon Cooper Center for Public Service at the University of Virginia. I'm welcome, welcoming this morning uh, Terry Repan, who's a Regional Economist for the Center for Economic Policy Studies, also at the Weldon Cooper Center. How are you doing? Doing pretty good, Charles. Staying healthy and active. Yeah. How about you? Same here. Uh, doing our best I can to uh, navigate these uh, challenging times. Um, I wanted to say thanks for coming on and just give a little background. Terry had produced a economic forecast a couple weeks ago, uh, looking at the uh, Virginia economy and also the local government economies here in Virginia and some of the fiscal impacts. So I'm going to take a few minutes today to talk with Terry about that. So I'll start with, uh, tell us how the COVID-19 pandemic has affected both the national and Virginia economies, and how does this compare to previous recessions? Okay, uh, Charles, I think everyone rec recognizes now that uh, we are in a recession. Um, four weeks ago, it wasn't, four, six weeks ago, it was not so clear, but now it's crystal clear with all the economic indicators coming in. And um, the report I did was actually done about two, three weeks ago. So the situation changes rapidly, you know, from week to week. Uh, it seems to be stabilizing somewhat, um, but we're looking at a recession, probably something similar to the magnitude of the 2007-9 uh, recession, um, which is, was about a, a 5% drop in GDP annualized. And um, unfortunately, it's going to be much deeper um, in the short term, um, but there should be a, a spring back uh, this fall um, once a lot of the businesses come back online um, later this summer. And so, um, you know, this, this recession is quite different from any others that we've experienced because it's a whole different set of sectors that are collapsing um, this time around uh, in 2007-9. Uh, it was the housing market and the financial institutions, and then that had knock-on effects to other sectors. And that was an atypical uh, recession, too, um, because previous recessions were caused mainly by Federal Reserve tightening to deal with inflationary um, pressures, and you had people deferring their durable good purchases and construction activity decreasing. And um, so it was more of a durable goods manufacturing-led recession, and it brought the other sectors with it. This time, it's service sectors. It's the restaurants. It's the entertainment industry. It's uh, tourism. Uh, anything that requires face-to-face -face, um, contact is really being hit hard in, in the initial phase. And then it has knock-on effects to all those other industries that supply it. In Virginia, we've uh, typically, in previous recessions, been hit less hard than other areas that are more manufacturing reliant or have a large financial services industry. We were affected, particularly in Northern Virginia, by the housing uh, downturn. But by and large, the state weathered the recession much better than the average state in the U.S. Um, and that's also true for 2001 and, and previous recessions. And the main reason is we have a large federal government and professional services contracting sector. And they've been pretty much insulated from, um, from the cutbacks, the, the layoffs, the furloughs, uh, unlike other sectors. And, um, and, and you know, this time um, that's going to be true too. Um, uh, but Virginia also relies, like other states, on all these service sectors. We have a huge amount of employment in, in, in the restaurant industry and in the tourism sector and entertainment, just like other states. So we're going to be hit uh, pretty much as hard as, as the other states um, in this regard. Um, and uh, it's going to affect areas of the state differently because some areas of the state are heavily reliant on the tourism industry. Virginia Beach, uh, Williamsburg, Colonial Williamsburg, and Bush Gardens, you know, they're heavily reliant on, on that. And uh, uh, some of our rural areas that have, uh, you know, like um, uh, the, the uh, homestead um, basically shut down now in that county uh, depends very heavily on, on uh, that hotel. Uh, it's, it's economic lifeblood. So... There's going to be a lot of regional variation in, in the effects in, in Virginia, too. Well, tell us a little bit about um, the model you use for this forecast. OK, 
Okay, we, we've been using a, a commercial economic impact forecasting model um, called REMI PI Plus. Uh, we do it for a lot of our work. Uh, we currently are using it for a study of economic development incentives for a state agency. We're evaluating those incentives on a case-by-case -case basis. And, you know, I, I saw an opportunity to use this uh, to analyze the economic impact of COVID-19 and I participated in a number of webinars that Remy had hosted on how to do this. And I basically adopted their approach with some tweaks and, um, of course, made an effort also to estimate, estimate the revenue impacts of the state and also drill down to the local level to get some local estimates of both the economic impact, the employment impact, and the revenue impacts for localities. And, you know, we thought this would provide uh, useful information for planning. The way that the model works, it basically is sort of a top-down model. So we take the national macro macroeconomic forecasts and we piggyback the state model on that. And it sort of drives the economic incomes um, for Virginia and down to the sectoral level, the industry level. And what we did then is we imputed a locality economic outcomes basically relying on the varied industrial structures of the localities. So you have Wise for Virginia that's very dependent on the coal industry. Um, you know, it would be weighted by the statewide mining industry impact that would be heavily affected by that, while Northern Virginia would be heavily affected by the huge presence of professional um, business services, uh, professional services. And so we get some differentiated effects across the state as well. Thanks. Now, that's very helpful. Um, sometimes it's hard for people to understand where uh, economists are, are gaining their information from and how we're using forecasts. So that, that background is, is extremely helpful. So tell us a little bit about the state budget impact that we've seen unfold so far. Okay. Um, so, so we, as I mentioned, we did revenue forecast um, or revenue impact analyses for both the state and the localities. And we come up with an estimate of between, depending on the scenario, we model two scenarios, a, a moderate scenario of negative 2% um, decline in the national uh, economy in 2020 and an alternative more severe uh, forecast of minus 6% which reflected the range of forecasts um, within the last week of, of March. Um, there's been a little bit of de deterioration in the average since then. Um, but uh, we came up under the optimistic or the moderate scenario with the um, FY10, uh, or excuse me, F FY21 uh, impact of $1 billion. And under the severe severe scenario of 1.6 billion, um, and so, or um, yeah, almost you know, round <laughs> rounding error to two billion, let's say. Um, and uh, for the localities, about f uh, 600 million to one billion. So the state um, gets impacted uh, a bit more than the localities because it has it relies on different revenues types of revenues that are very income sensitive, the income tax, um, also sales tax, corporate income taxes. Localities are, are um, to some degree, there's a little bit of a buffer for them because so much of their revenue comes from real property tax. And uh, the way we modeled that is we, the primary effect on real property would come through the commercial sector um, and so we modeled that. And the other ways that localities are affected, they have a lot of um, uh, revenues that are also affected by a particular economic sector activity. For instance, the lodging sector uh, affects hotel motel tax collections, and that's basically shut down now. Uh, meals taxes, a lot of communities rely on those, and that has been heavily impacted. And admissions for amusements and recreation firms and the state uh, excuse me the localities also depend on sales and use uh, local option sales tax so we modeled all of those and that that's primarily what's being impacted at the local level um, you know eventually there will be some sort of feed through impacts on uh, the real property sector we don't know 
uh, what the size of that will be. Um, don't expect it to be the same magnitude as the 2007-9 recession. That was really a housing-led recession, and property prices just plummeted. You know, just it was a huge decrease in in in, uh, in housing prices at that time. Um, and you know, I don't think anyone is seeing that uh, magnitude of decline in, in housing prices. Um, but the commercial sector is going to be impacted much more. Uh, there are a lot, going to be a lot more vacant storefronts. You hear almost, it's almost a daily basis, you hear about a major retail service uh, firm going bankrupt, um, whether it be J.C. Penney, Neiman Marcus, um, some restaurant group. Um, it, it, it's just coming at us fast and furious. So that's going to result in... Um, in a lot of uh, vacancies and, and, and uh, businesses not able to keep up with their leases and rent. Yeah, those are those are a lot of challenges. Uh, I think that folks are anticipating. So it's going to be very interesting and uh, to see how these affect both state and local government. So about our, our localities. Uh, so what are some of the economic and budget impacts for Virginia localities? Well, as you look across the landscape right now, a lot of the particular larger um, localities have already taken action. Um, you, you hear like Fairfax is anticipating, uh, um, you know, uh, a budget shortfall of 150, 160 million dollars or so. Chesterfield, 50 million. Um, Chesterfield has actually instituted some layoffs. Um, so uh, you know they've they've they already have a pretty much a pretty good handle on their local finances and how this might. Have, impact them. Um, of course, we've come up some, with some estimates um, for, you know, what those budgetary impacts would be, and, and they may differ from what the localities have come, come up with, uh, but I think they provide some conservative estimates that they can, you know, take and say, well, you know, it's going to be at least this, this amount, so we need to prepare at a bare minimum for, the, for these budgetary impacts. Um, so what are localities doing? What are their options? Well, right now it's, it's freezing, um, any spending increases, hires, laying off at least temporarily. Um, you know, if they have seasonal personnel doing parks and recreation, recreational activities, well, they're not, they're not happening right now, right? The, the pools are not open. You don't need lifeguards. Um, uh, teachers, uh, custodians in schools, um, you know, you don't need as many, um, so, so those, those things are happening. Um, so, you know, some spending restraint, um, also, you know, some localities are probably going to have to look at revenue enhancement, whether that's taxes or fees. And they're also going to want to look at the possibility of utilizing the federal aid that's available now, which is pretty limited because it can only be used for direct COVID-19 expenses. And it's hard it's it's hard to come up with a huge uh, number there that is going to offset the indirect effects of COVID nineteen. They're by far having the largest budgetary impacts in the localities. So um, those are some of the things that uh, you know they can uh, localities can lobby for uh, enhanced federal aid maybe in the next round. Uh, it's been mostly a discussion of what the states should get and the states can pass through those revenues um, in various ways. And some of the localities, well, well, Fairfax in particular, can directly apply to the federal government for the, um, the current uh, aid that's available. Um, the other thing I think localities probably need to look at is ways to uh, enhance efficiency through regional cooperation, uh, you know, better asset management. Uh, if they have surplus properties, you know, it might be time to dispose of them, um, uh, contracting with other localities, maybe consolidating services if there are opportunities. Um, so, you know, there are a lot of things that, that localities can do. This is sort of an impetus. This will cause uh, a lot of local governments to look at new ways of doing business, I think, to save money. All right. Well, well, thank you for that summary of, of your report. I appreciate it. I hope uh, our viewers uh, take away some some uh, new points they haven't thought about from this. 
Uh, and we hope that uh, everyone who watches this uh, stays safe as we navigate through this pandemic. Uh, Terry, thanks again for taking time to be with us this morning. Happy to be here, Charles, and maybe we'll do this again sometime soon.